Hello, I'm Matthew Kay from Beyond the Burke, and I'm here with David Pagano. And David, you're the author of the uh, Burke Animation book, I believe. Yes, still co-author. Author, still co-author. Author. Yes. Oh, I mean, I am an author. Author, co-author. Yes, I am. Fifty percent, right? David Pagano and David Pickett join forces in a Voltron sort of way okay. and create this book okay. forthcoming Very from nice. New Star Trek. Very nice. Yes. Um, and so, well, when we're uh, talking about uh, Lego animation, brick animation, if you will, mm -hmm. um, it's how important to consider uh, how one builds for animation, but right. it's also kind of important to, like, how does one animate Lego? Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess, what would you like to touch upon that just uh, a little bit, maybe give a, like, a little bit of a synopsis of uh, what, like, uh, Lego animation, like how do they go together? What, what, should, sure. what should we be using for equipment? I'm just gonna continue to ramble on with this question <laughs> for uh, as long as I possibly can, but I'll let you talk. <laughs> uh, sure. So, um, so there's two sections in the Lego animation book that kind of uh, touch very directly on uh, animation with Lego. Uh, the first one is a section about minifigure movement, and that's sort of you know, how are minifigures articulated, what are the best ways to keep them moving. Um, obviously they are humanoid, but they don't move, they don't have the same range of motion that a human being does, though. Like, you can't do this with a minifigure. Yeah. There's a lot of, like, there's no knees, that's always kind of a big uh, sticking point. Um, so we talk about the ways that you can, rather than lamenting, oh, this minifigure will never move like a human, uh, what are the ways that you can sort of exaggerate its, its actions to make it do the movements that yeah. it can do even more like overtly. Yeah. So we talk about that, we talk about ways to sort of the basic like minifigure gestures and stuff like that. So there's things like, you know, obviously minifigures can move like this, so there'll be a thing that's like a point, or there'll be like an arm lift. There's a thing like, um, we, <laughs> we see a lot of things where there's like a character needs to shrug and it's like, well how does a how do, how do you do a shrug with a minifigure? And the answer is you kind of do like this, like, it's almost like oh, presentational. Oh, the hands turn? The hands see. turn. It's like, well, what do I do? Yeah. So the, so, the affordances of the minifigure form. Yes, so, it's, yeah. so, so it's more, it's, there's a lot of uh, caricaturing. Mm -hmm. So it's like getting the idea or the feeling of a movement across without necessarily being able to do the full motion. Um, so that's the minifigure. Uh, movement part of the book, and we also talk about obviously walk cycles and things like that. Things that are um, things that are very basic, and um, sort of how you can combine movements to create a an acting performance with a minifigure actor. Sure. Um, and then the other side of it is animation principles, and these are sort of the tried and true tenets. Uh, they come from like uh, the Disney folks, exactly, uh, and they sort of developed them over the course of fifty years or something like that. Um, and so that's that's sort of more, you know, whereas minifigure movement is very Lego focused, uh, animation principles are more um, Brian, anim Brian animation Ball. specific. Yeah. yeah. So there's stuff like, uh, you know, I mentioned exaggeration already, and that's like a very key uh, principle of animation because, um, you know, we talk about how animation, people ask us, oh, how do you make like realistic motion? And it's not really about making things look real, it's about making things look alive. Like that's what the word animation means. Yeah. So we talk about how to exaggerate things so that like, you know, happy happy people are like really happy and then sad people are really sad. So that all it's all about getting uh, clear communication from filmmaker to audience. Yeah. And um, less nuanced sort of uh, well I mean you can obviously you can, you play off you can do that, but um, you know, you sort of learn the rules so then you know how to break them properly, that kind of thing. Um, we talk about, um, so part of exaggeration is uh, squash and stretch, which is where you'll see cartoon characters who have kind of like a lively uh, volume, voluminous a bounce and uh, wiggle to their body. It makes them a little more flexible. Yeah. Obviously, um, many figures are all one piece. But we talk about ways that you can kind of like uh, break the rig, sort of, um, not in a destructive way, but you'll see a lot of great films where like a character will be surprised and the wig will pop up a little bit. And like that's not, none of the shapes of the Lego pieces are changing, but the shape of the overall form changes and that becomes very, um, it can become very like squashy or stretchy. Yeah. Like, ah, and the wig awesome. pops up. So um, there's stuff like that. Um, we t uh, a lot of the animation principles have to do with physics. Um, so if you, if, 
those things you're wondering, If you're wondering why you need to be in science class, uh, the animation answer is because it's useful for animation. Like animation, folks. Yeah. Um, so physics, things like gravity, um, weight is critical for making animated characters or animated anything just look yeah, alive. Yeah. 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 Um, so. Uh, Diving into the nitty gritty of yeah. actually animating, um, mm -hmm. do you recommend software, cameras, uh, any equipment uh, in the the process of animating f in the book? Sure, we have a, a section about tools of the trade, tools and the um, we kind of go through uh, every kind of camera that you can possibly use. Not necessarily specific models, but specific excuse me, not necessarily specific models, but specific types of cameras. So you can use. A webcam, you can use a DSLR, you can use a point and shoot camera. Um, actually, what we recommend for beginners, if they have it already, is just a smartphone running a stop motion app. app yeah. and, uh, Any app in that's, particular? That's always uh, stop Motion Studio by Cat Eater. Cat Eater. It's, like, it's a nice um, sort of balance between like not being so simple that it's like things. If, Too you, if, you, if you know anything about animation, you're like, oh, why doesn't it have XYZ? But not so complex that you're like, ah, there's, there's too many options yeah, here. I don't know what to do. Um, uh, obviously, Lego also has the the, um, the Lego Movie Maker app, and that's uh, another option. Sure. Uh, I think the Lego one is free, so that's, obviously that is a uh, positive thing. But any tool you have, you should leverage that. Is what you're getting yes. At. Use what you have uh, first, and then once you're like. I still kind of want to do this animation business. Yeah. Then no need like, to rush out and purchase a ton right, of studio equipment. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. No, and in fact, we we emphasize greatly like do things for cheap as free. Yeah. Um, and then uh, well, I'm thinking desktop editing applications, uh, Adobe Flash, or some other Adobe Suite program. Uh, well, Flash is more of a uh, an animation, animation program, within. but in terms of like the editing of uh, like film editing, we we, like, we talk about Premiere. I mean, we don't. We don't get into, again, this is not a book about how to use Premiere. There are other books that you can find that are that. Um, but we say, you know, here's some of the options for editing your film. Here are some of the options for doing effects or masking. Sure. Uh, here are the options for if you need to do photo retouching. Um, so it's more about, like, letting people know what's out there as opposed to saying, like, this is the one answer mm -hmm. um, because there is no one answer. Because you're presenting options to people. Uh, correct, like, correct. An educated decision because they're being educated with your lovely, lovely book. Thank you, yes. Yeah. No, uh, I'm all about education and uh, sharing like what we've learned because, mm -hmm. you know, we've been, Dave and I have both been doing Lego animation for a long time and uh, while I hesitate to use words like experts, like we kind of know what has worked for us and what questions people ask and what has worked and not worked for other people. So filtering all of that information into a nice digestible um, uh, stocking stuffer, uh, if you will, um, is, is what our goal was. So. Sure. Well, it sounds like a fantastic book, David. I, I hope so. I can run and get a copy when it comes out. Yes. I awesome. cannot wait for it to come out. Awesome. Either.